If everyone see my screen, it should be showing the daily lunch and learn. Yep, I see it. Perfect. Let me present. Where is present? Right there. I can't read. Uh, all right. Welcome, everybody, to today's Lunch and Learn. I'll be your host, uh, Jared. I will be um, hosting today's Lunch and Learn. So if you have any questions, feel free to pop it into the chat or into the uh, Zoom Q&A. Or if it is something that you need to explain verbally, let me know, and I can give you guys permission to speak, and then you can ask your question. Robert, could you go ahead and post that uh, pre-submitted question? I think we have one pre-submitted question that we can go over as you think about your questions. Yep, I'm on it. Thank you. Awesome. So the pre-submitted question we have was, if I'm using a truth table, uh, was it if I'm using a truth table to run flows on the outputs, how can I get the data from those running flows to be used after the truth table? Can they output information? If not, how can I get the data from those flows to be utilized after um, the truth tables? That's a really good question. I'm not sure if that's the case, if you can get the data back. The reason why is because, uh, possibly, the reason why is because those uh, flows run um, asynchronously as the truth table hits. So, but um, let me, let's go ahead and test that out. I believe that's not possible. If that's, if I am correct on that, what I would recommend is utilizing a runtime selection. And within those runtime selection flows, you can output data into your parent flow and then utilize that later on. So that'd be the workaround um, for that. Um, the truth table, like add out um, action output, that's primarily used for like if you want to trigger like a notification or trigger something that you don't need data to be returned from. But let's go ahead. Like every good question, we're going to go ahead and build that in decisions. So I'm just going to create my folder scaffolding. Come on, decisions. Work for me. There you go. Perfect. And we're going to say this is test um, rule output stuff. And as we test rule output stuff, we shall see what happens. Probably need to install a new database on my uh, system. It's probably getting quite large, and that's why it's a little, a little sluggish. And perfect. Awesome. Let me see if I can go ahead. I want to delete some of these things. Uh, right click, manage, delete. Delete it all. I don't need it anymore. I mean, if that's just going to take longer, I'm just going to not worry about it. All right, so we're just not gonna worry about it. All right, flows. So if I go into, ah, that's fine. So if I go into, let's say if I create my, uh, this is test, uh, or actually I need to create, yeah, that's uh, testing rule output uh, flows, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna test this out. I'm gonna test the rule output flows. So we're gonna create a truth table to match the scenario that this uh, request came in. So run truth table, pick, Create, I'm gonna say this is truth, truth table evaluate with action. Nice long name, create, cool. And then 
Sure. Uh, well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say that if the flow data, is, the base portal URL is this, which obviously it is, we're just going to, uh, oh, equals. Come on. Come on. All right, then we'll say equals. And then we'll just say, I'll just match it. It will match the exact same thing since this doesn't really matter what the real criteria is. And so the thing that the user is talking about is if you have the allow actions output checked over here, what will happen is you'll see another kind of column appear here um, that will allow you to add actions um, to output once a user has um, evaluated um, that certain criteria. Man, this thing is super slow. Hold on a second, guys. I'm going to restart my local because this is just miserable. All right, restart this thing. Ooh, my goodness. If not, I got another system that we can test this on. So no biggie. But I think once I give it a good old restart, it should be um, good and be nice and zippy. And we'll be flying. All right, I had a question on uh, scheduled jobs. Uh, do we need admin access to schedule a flow? Also, why would we need admin? Uh, why uh, also why would we need the admin not to see my project when trying to use jobs and events? Am I missing something? Uh, great question. I'll answer that after this one. Um, is this uh, Smith? Is this for version nine or version eight? Question. I'm just curious which uh, version in version nine. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, so awesome, cool. Because I will demonstrate that in version nine. I don't think you would need uh, admin permissions to see it. I think you just need designer in version nine. Actually, I'll answer this question while the server comes back online. I have this. What is it? Try. I can spell. Of course. Hold on. Of course, it's not that. Uh, let's see. OK. Dun, 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 dun. OK, cool. We got this. Boom. All right, cool. Launch into this. Um, I think the schedule jobs they appear in an area, and I'll, I'll test this out by creating my own account. But I believe when you go inside of it, the in manage in jobs and events, um, you should be able to access that here from a designer permission level on that. Um, just to confirm, I will go ahead and create a an account. I'll say this is the um, test. Uh, we'll call this test designer test designer at mail.com right nice and creative uh let's see hopefully there's no yeah okay cool so i can make this a nice very simple password and i'm just going to say this is the uh, designer users um access so it has limited of what it can get and i think that's all i really need let me make sure i copy this so i don't have to worry about um having to remember that email that i typed so, okay, I got access to the project. So if I go to, um, you know, this project that I have and I go to manage um, right here, schedule jobs, events, boom, then I can create um, any schedule job that I need um, I'm over here. Let me see if I right click. Do I have any right click actions? Jobs and events, schedule jobs. Oh, wait, where is the thing? Oh, do I know? oh, I know why. I wonder if it's because I don't have any flows. Let me create a quick flow. Engineering exercise. Oh, I do have flow. Okay, so I can't get access to it. Projects move more advanced. Oh, I wonder if you need to add permissions to it. Let me add permissions to this thing. Training at decisions.com. And then let me add in this. Then I want to give this permissions 
uh, to, oh, see, so I have no permissions for the designer user group. That makes sense. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to give recent designer users privileges to this. I want to give them the ability to can open, can use, can view, edit, um, and add, uh, let's see, and can view browse page. So I'm going to give them those types of permissions. And let me go ahead and grab that account that I created. And grab that. We log out, go into here, log in as this, and then I believe I should be able to make changes to that. And I think I can add jobs and events to it. work schedule jobs, startup jobs, thread jobs, all delayed jobs. Yep, system wide, all delayed jobs. Can I? Nope, go back here. Can I go into my flows and can I, is there anywhere you can publish it? Set advanced templates, integration, compare flow. Let's check our doc site. I wonder if our doc site has anything over that. Version nine scheduled jobs. So that's interesting because I don't think I even had it as an administrator um, in it. Uh, let's see, scheduled job. Projects, I think it's, was it integrations? This is version, yeah, it's in version nine. Projects, info dashboard, public manage, error handling. So work types, add a work queue, schedule jobs. I'm just going to also ask. Because, yeah, this is a good question. I'm not sure. Ugh. Put this here. And we're going to go. And that asked this question internally for a second. Oops. Now, here's the thing, I think. Uh, oh, let me log out in the other one. I believe you still can create scheduled jobs through the old way. And then in that regard, if it is that, then you would have to then um, have access to um, at least that folder to configure um, scheduled jobs. So if I go to jobs and events, scheduled job, I can do a new scheduled job flow. That's interesting. Don't know why it's not there. Because of what what I uh, does it schedule job name create a schedule job. so this is the same thing okay interesting can I pick any flow recent all projects okay. Yep, I'm not sure. So, because it looks like you can only have the flow. If it's part of a project in version 9, you can't add it. And then, obviously, if I go inside the project itself, there is no button. If I go to Manage and Add, if I go to Integrations, that's scripting, Jobs and Events, Scheduled Jobs. Oh, wait a minute. It is there. That's weird. Okay, so it sounds like you do need add permissions. Let me see, here's here's the one thing I want to know. I can't right click. So then so then what that means, okay, now we're now now it's developing. So now it seems like it's just a permissions thing. So if I go back here and if I go to more permissions and I give the designer user, if I say can administrate over this, I believe 
that should give me enough permissions to be able to, darn it, I forgot what that other one was. What was it test? I think it's test designer. Oh, here we go. Haha. -ha. The cache saved my life. And then I believe um, then you'll have the ability to um, administrate this project. I could be wrong with that. Yeah, boom. Okay, cool. So that's how you would do it. So you do need to have the administrate um, flag on your project checked for any group that you want to be able to create uh, scheduled jobs. And then you can pick the schedule flow, which I think in this case, I should be able to find my flows, perfect my test flow, and I can pick it. So yeah, so that's what it is. You'll need the uh, can administrate permission on the group or the account to the project level to have uh, those, um, those configurations there. Yeah. So yeah, to answer with good schedule jobs. Uh, yep. To add and administrate to the project. Boom. All right. Okay, cool. Great question. Learned a lot there. Um, uh, I'm gonna go back to where's mine? Nope, that's not it. Nope, that's that. Let me go back to my local. Hopefully it's a lot faster. And of course it's not. All right, test rule output stuff. Hello. It's a little bit a little bit more. It's a little bit better. But you run truth table over here. Wow, that, that should not take that long. Let's see, follow-up question. Also, is there a reason why the admin cannot see my project? Like you're talking about the admin in the administrators group or the admin, because I think admins, oh, no, 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 no. So yeah, the reason why is because um, if you look at the permissions of that project, it's only tied to that specific account that can see it. So you want to be, in version 9, the thing you have to be very particular about is if someone can see something, one person can, the other person can't, you will have to be very um, aware of what the permission set is. So for, for example, if I want to add groups to this, I can add the administrators group. If I go to all, fill show. I don't know why it's not showing any of my groups here. Oh, because I'm not, I'm logged in as the other account. Hold on, let me log out. And then go back to um, this one. I'm logged back in there. And then I could easily see if I go here, more permissions, right? Just designers. And then if I want to add another group, I think now I can finally pick into the all groups, system, security, groups. I can pick administrators to now view it. So version nine is a lot more different than version eight um, in this regard, where you just have to make sure that the permissions aren't always defaultly set, um, like in version eight. It's a lot more, more. There's more barriers and more um, kind of um, kind of right and left limitations, and so you just have to be very specific of what you want to have access. So that would be the thing you want to make sure that there's certain groups that you want to have access to certain things. Go ahead and add that group to the permissions. What I would advise doing is making sure that you create your own like developer group, like, hey, dev group A, right? And whoever you want to build certain projects, you just add them to, to dev group A and save these reserved ones um, for people who you want to administer like the entire system or things like that. That's uh, what I would do um, as you scaffold and kind of organize people in that uh, re regard. All right, where is the perfect recent? Come on. All right, so now we got this. I'm going to click off. Wow, this thing is still not that fast. Cool. All right, so the question here is, if I pick or create a run flow, I'm going to create a flow. We'll call this my um, run data flow output. And I click create. Then we stare longingly in each other's eyes for a little bit. OK, good. 
No, it's not too bad. All right, now let's say I'm going to do some cool, like I'm just going to add something to it. Um, I want to add, I don't want to add days. I just want to add, do I have to add double? Uh, let's sure, let's divide. Divide. And then I'm going to say by a value of one. And then I'm going to say uh, by a value of five, right? Or zero. <laughs> divide. And we'll say by a value of five. Perfect. So then we can go ahead and connect this. And let's say I want to output this value, and this is going to be my uh, divided result. And we'll say this is a decimal. And we save. We go here, close here, and then we select from flow, select from flow, divide output, boom. And then let's see if that gets outputted. I don't think it will, but it may get outputted. Dismiss. All right, cool. So now that's configured there to run. OK, cool. And then now I'm going to save. And now let's just run. Oop, that's going to return false. I got to fix that because I forgot the colon. Close. Uh, colon for the port number, HTTP localhost. So now it should return true, and it should run that specific thing that I have. All right. Yep. See, I don't. It's not even gonna output it. I debug this. Boom. Yep. Just return true. But I can see over here that it did run this flow. Uh, it just didn't output that data like I wanted. So what I would recommend is utilizing a runtime flow selection where you'd have a truth table that says, hey, if if I want if this equals that, I'm going to change this data to be a string. So this is going to be my default output. This will be a string. Boom. And you're going to put your flow ID here, right? This is like a, just a placeholder. So if I want to run this data flow, so let me go ahead and go ahead and grab another another tab of this so that you can see what happens. Because if I actually want the data to come out from it, then I need to make sure that test rule output stuff flows. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, test run flow data output. So I'm going to manage, get the flow ID. Uh, t -t 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 Okay, that's a long ID. And then I'm going to do the test. Oh, it's already open here. So then now what I'm going to do is in this, I'm just going to paste this ID. That's the ID that we got to run. Uh, we can say this is like no flow ID. Yep. And so now what I would do, so this thing would output a string. In this case, I'm just going to output the first match only because I'd only need it to output um, that ID. And then what I would do is I would have this run flow step. This run flow step, come on. My goodness. Come on, local. The weird thing is that I'm not even running that much stuff on the computer. It's just size to be flow, uh, slow today. All right, so I got this run subflow step, right? And then what I'm going to do is um, you'll have some type of template. So I'm going to say this is my template flow. Template flow, right? It doesn't have to do anything. You just create a template flow that gives decisions the base of what it should expect. So since I'm outputting a decimal in a, a flow that I will be running here, I just need to make sure that I have an output. Um, the variable name does not matter. And I have the data type as decimal because decisions will automatically detect like, okay, I need to look for a flow that ha somewhat resembles this, that has a decimal output. And in this case, there will be no inputs. I'll just connect the start and end step. You really don't have to even connect it. You can just leave it like this. I can close and save. 
And then now what I can do is I can change the selection type to be runtime selection. And then it asks for the target ID. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select from flow. And I'm going to select the truth table evaluate action with result. And then now what should happen is as it runs, boom, it ran my uh, that flow data output. And then when I look at it from here, now I have my output a divided result. So that's the way you're going to want to um, fix it and resolve it um, for your process. If you have a trigger flow in a rule, it's not going to output the data. You have to first run. Um, you should run the truth table to say output the flow ID and use runtime selection for it. All right, I can see the flow in, in Manage now, but when I actually try to create a job, it doesn't let me select the flow. What am I doing wrong here? Did you, so uh, where is that other flow residing at? So in, actually, I don't think I can show it with this one because it's a little wonky at the moment. Um, if you're utilizing any um, other flows that exist in other projects, you have to, oh, you can see the flow now? Oh, okay. Um, because if you're, if in the event, oh, but you cannot pick that one. Oh, you can see the flow, but you can't pick it? Let's, let me test that out. Where is that one? I think it's about test mail. And we'll do, oh yeah, that's right, is that one. I go to manage jobs and events, scheduled jobs, new scheduled job. We'll do test, uh, pick scheduled job flow, flows, test flow, pick. Let's see, it looks like that one worked for me. I could pick my flow just fine. Um, an another thing you can do if you still can't find it and you can't pick that, yeah, you can't pick that, then what you can do is go ahead and I think you can create, can you not create a flow anymore? Oh, that's unfortunate. Pick schedule job. So if you can see the flow, dependencies, recent. Have you made a dependency with that project? Like to pick it? So let me go to another version 9 instance to show this. If I go to version 9, I think it's this one. Is it not found? Darn it. Oh, uh, Robert, is there another version 9 server we have? Uh, let me look. Let me look. I thought we had another one. If not, I have a I do have another one I could use. Training O2. Let's utilize this one temporarily. I put one uh one of the one that I have made in the chat. I'm not sure if that's exactly what you mean, but I mean that works. Why would you use that one? Uh, let me just give you is it Smitha? I'll just give you the ability to talk. Let's see, go here. Boom. Uh, yeah, I can see my flows and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, because I'm a designer, but I don't see that pick option. That are they, button that you have. Are they all? Are they all in this view here on the folder view? Do you know? Uh, it's in a project. Yes, it's version nine. So I'm going from the project, right? Right, right. But like my question specifically here is: Is it in? Uh, let me move this. Is it specifically? Zoom. Move this. Oh my gosh. Zoom. Anyway, is it in the folder view here? where you see like the flow that you want in this menu here, or is it actually in this project view here? Oh, let me see, check. Because if, if the flow is outside here, you will be able to see it, but you won't be able to pick it because it's not technically part of a project. Uh, where should it be? It should be part in the project, right? Let me just see. Yeah, so if you have like a designer folder, which I think our other one, it, actually, I don't. Uh, 
yeah, I see it on the projects though. So you click on this button and then you see your flow within like the flows folder, the project folder here? Uh, yeah, my thing, yes. My project, it's under the project, yes. I'm, I'm not in the, the folders, project. I'm in the project folder. Okay, in the project view? Yes, in the project view, I go but, to... But the flows that you have in that folder or in that project, did are, were those flows converted into this project? Or did you just create those flows in the project? I created that flow in the project. Okay, create that from the project. And you're using a non-admin account, right? Yes. Do you have the ability to can use on that account to the flows folder? Mm, I should be able to see, would I, with my thing, uh, permissions, what manage permissions, what should I, uh, should I can use? Okay, I can, do you want me to give myself can use, can open everything? Um, Give that as a test, yeah. Because that sounds like it's a permissions issue. Okay. Uh, I can give everything if it lets me do. Uh, I have to pick a group. I mean, so you can uh, use like all users group for, all... for just testing. You don't want to do that for a prod environment, but for just testing. I don't think I can pick anything because I can't see any group to pick. I can't see any group to pick. I can see that, mm -hmm. they, but I don't think I have ability to, without admin access, I won't be able to do anything, right? Um, To add a group or the permissions? Yeah, you'd have to be able to have the permission to administrate, correct? Okay, so uh, what I need to do is ask uh, my admin to give me the can use for uh, for this project. Correct, and I would, uh, yeah. If we, if you, um, to help make it easier, I could we can submit a support ticket on your behalf, just in case if there's something that's like a, like a maybe a DT or a bug that's not working, um, okay. as expected. Because if if permitting, if your flow is part of a project, mm -hmm. it is, and and it is, but are you but are you trying to set the scheduled job of that flow in another project? No, I okay. just want it in the same thing. Okay, so then. Yeah, so then it sounds like it's either a permission thing, and one of our support staff can help you walk you through that. Okay. Um, but if you ever, if you ever seeing things like that, that's what it is. It's just a, per a permission issue that just okay. has to be tweaked. Okay. So yeah, um, do you want me to submit a ticket, or how does that go? Or... Yeah, you, you can email support at decisions dot com, or we can submit it for you on your behalf. Okay, um, I'll let them know that I spoke to you. I can do it right now. No worries. Okay. Sounds thank you. Good. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Cool. All right, what else? What other questions? Any other questions? I have a report sitting on a page. I want to use a left-click action on any row of data in that report to navigate the user to another page that contains details of a selected row. Uh, how do I go about this? Sure, let me give you a lot of talk. Hi, yeah, so I have a page and on that page I have a report in there and I want the user to be able to left-click on any selected row and then for that to navigate them to another page that contains details about that um, row. So that second page, the details page has like two flow run parts. In the flow run parts, it just contains uh, dynamic labels. And then it also contains another report. Gotcha, so it's just how do I just navigate to another one? via yeah, left click action navigate and is there some kind of rule or something that i need to put like i i want the data to correlate with that selected row so like for example like if, if the report on the page has like a title a create date whatever and i want to be able to feed in that data from that specific row into um the dynamic labels like the title create a date so on Sure. I think the the thing that you'll want to utilize is the I forgot what it's called. It's like there's there's one that you can use that's good, and there's another one that's bad. And so I want to make sure I get the naming right on it. Uh, it's a calculated column. 
And so anytime we use a calculated column, you always want to be uh, concerned about performance. But if you use the one that's a, a click, then you won't have to worry about it. It's the one that just automatically runs a flow per row item. So let me go common, count data, and then I'm just going to just add email just for sake of uh, entity name, sure. So now it, you can go ahead and click add, and then there is a calculated column. I will find it. It's not matched line. Is it this one? It is this one. Let's say test. And then close. Yes. All right. So this one is called, um, where's the name? I think it's called flow run flow inline field. I should be able to find it because it'll be quick. Yeah, it's called run flow inline field. That one's okay. The one you want to avoid pretty much at all costs, there's almost not a reason you would ever use it, is the flow inline field. So flow inline field, that's the that's the that's the one to always avoid. But the run flow inline field, that one we can utilize and and not be too concerned with performance because it doesn't run the flow, it just gives you that option to display it. Okay, cool. So now to the actual question at hand. So now what this allows you to do is, is now in this flow for a selected row, I can give someone the ability, I can design a flow. Let's see, uh, test action flow. And now what I can do is this flow allows you to grab the selected row of data. So whatever data they have, you can utilize um, for that navigation. And the steps that you would utilize would be the navigate, I think it's like, and that's no, not navigate form. There's like this end form session step. Come on. Come on. I think I have a faster, let me, let me pull up another server because this is this. Throws off my groove. I think it is, here we go. We're gonna utilize this because I think this might be a little bit faster. Oh, I misspelled it and from end form. At decisions.com, we grab this. Yeah, I think this will actually be faster, which is quite sad. So if I go into, yeah, we get LNL test, and I'll just create another report, demonstrate this test report. Yeah, that's so much better. Um, so I can uh, you add, add my end form session step. It allows you to have multiple options where instead of displaying a message, I can say, hey, I want to navigate uh, navigate to a different folder, and I get the folder and the page name. Um, it says retain parameters. Um, then what you can do is you can, there's a set dashboard. Come on. Comment. Account, email address, add calculated column, run flow line field, test, pick, create, report handler. There we go, finally. And so then what you can do is you can say, hey, I want to set the dashboard parameters of a specific folder. So if I, so what you can do is, is on that flow run part, you'll probably have some like um, uh, data buses that store like the URL values um, in the, uh, in the, you know, in the um, URL of that dashboard. And then what you would do is you would populate those uh, report parameters or those, uh, data bus parameters with both utilizing the set dashboard report step and also the i think set page variable step 
is one that you can also use to set the page variable into something different. And so that allows you to have one, the clickable action to go, and then the filtering of the report and also the page variable as you pass the stuff through. Or actually, I think you can specify the parameters on here. Oh, cool. So it looks like you don't even need this. So it looks like you can specify, let's say this is my account ID, just for sake of example. Okay, cool. So you can actually, with the inform session step, just set your parameters from the select from flow. So if I go to my select from flow, my selected row of whatever the user clicked, let's say field one contained the um, text value of, of the email address, right, that I want to dynamically add, then now when I navigate to it, it will set that uh, report parameter value to that. So actually, you just need one step, and that's what should take care of it. Nice. Okay. Yeah, that's what I do. Give that a shot. See if there's any. See if that works. Um, the other thing you have to be aware of is on the report you're sending it to, you will have to make sure that it refreshes when there's a change event like that, so that when it actually gets navigated to, um, there that report will refresh. Um, will you be having a lot of uh, uh, multiple people looking at that same dashboard? Um, it'll be like maybe six people. Okay. So, so not too many. Gotcha. Still in this regard, um, whenever you re trigger a refresh on a dashboard, um, was it, it's called send folder change event. I'm going to do it on this one because it's just going to be faster. Send folder change event. There's going to be several different types of these send folder change events. One of the things you're going to want to make sure you utilize is the send folder change event for the user. And the reason why you want that is because if there's six people viewing the dashboard, and let's say different people click on that action to navigate to it, then the dashboard that they navigated to will constantly be refreshing because people will be clicking the, ac the um, action on the previous dashboard. However, if I say, hey, only filter change that dashboard for the current user because they just navigated to it, then it will only refresh that dashboard for that current user and not affect the other five users. Because the other five users will be seeing the constant refreshing and they'll be like, oh, this dashboard's horrible. It, it's always refreshing. When in reality, it's just uh, the send folder change event was used instead of the send folder change event for user. Okay. I'll give that a go. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, my pleasure. Sweet. Also, there's also a great document for everyone in, in the call there. Um, Jasmine put in a, a document for highlighting the different, um, let's look at it, let me just talk about it a little bit, that actually talks about each of the different calculated column fields um, and their um, differences. So if you're ever curious what um, they do, um, you can see uh, um, those actions there. I think if you do the flow in line field, this is the one you want to avoid. Yeah, perfect. So the flow in line field, this one says, hey, um, avoid on large, larger reports for severe impact. But this uh, this calculate column is great. Appreciate Jasmine for the for the link, and that will be a, a good one for your knowledge. All right. So what else? Any other questions? Okay. Wait, QA, there's one. All right. Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop. I'm going to call the lunch and learn, and uh, we'll make sure that we end it so that we can get the recording mixed, and we'll get that um, put on our YouTube website so those who had questions can see and watch the video of the demonstration for it. Um, but before I end, I do want to talk about a couple of cool things coming down the Decisions Pipeline. Uh, we do have some really fun events um, happening for uh, our summer. So if you go to our Decisions website and we go to events, we do have a deep dive in Denver, Colorado just coming up in the next week. 
So go ahead and smash that register button. And we'd love to see you in Denver, Colorado. There's going to be a great number of, of car customers, partners, and also decisions experts there that can answer your questions live there and also be able to network with other like-minded uh, decisions enthusiasts who build really cool projects for their own business businesses and customers there. Uh, let's see, we also have a um, deep dive training in Virginia Beach coming up in September. So that's gonna be a fun um, thing to attend there. And then if you are ever overseas in more of the Asia area, we also will have a deep dive submerged event in Singapore. So um, if you have any customers or coworkers who live in that region and they want to learn more about decisions, this would be a great place to um, check it out and attend that. So we also have our decision support YouTube channel, which we update every, uh, every Friday with new videos. And then our decision solution marketplace, where we also have examples of different projects that our partners and also um, internally we have built. So if you want to scan that QR code on the screen here and take a look at those projects, they'll be very beneficial in helping to grow your knowledge. With that being said, I will see you guys next time.